Matty Ritchie, welcome to In The Box, mate. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, the second best left foot I saw whilst I was at Swindon behind Alessandro Chivotti. <laughs> <laughs> he was good to be fair, wasn't it? Three kicks in there. I remember him. Who knows? Um, yeah, nice. Uh, it's good to come on, mate. Thanks. How's nice things? Yeah, good. Good. Um, I've got to be honest, I'm, um, I'm, I'm enjoying the time off. Uh, you know me, I love football and that, but... Um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, I think it's it's disappointing, obviously, what's happening at the moment. But the uh, the, the chance to I, I live away from my family most of the time. I'm up in Newcastle, no down yeah. south. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm enjoying being around the kids more and things like that. So just making the most of the of a bad situation, really. Yeah, of course. Like I say as well, you don't know you don't often get this much time off, so you might as well take the positive out of it, mind you. Right. Um, Moving on to your team then, the reason why you're on. Now, you made a late change to your team and I know you were saying you found uh, life tough as a, uh, as a manager. So, what was your thinking <laughs> behind your selections, mate? <laughs> uh, Rune, do you know what? I, um, you ne I never think, I've never thought about a manager's team. You, you, know, you know me, I'm like one of them. As long as I'm in it, I couldn't give a hoot to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, when you said to me, pick a team, I was thinking, wow, oh, this, this is a tough ask here. Yeah. And... Uh, I wrote down like positions. I wrote like three or four in, in that position where I played with, yeah. and you forget some, and uh, you have short spells and things like that. And I was like writing it down. I was thinking, I can't, I can't pick eleven players here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, hates put me in his team, so I felt obliged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, it, it is. It's tough, and uh, obviously you play with you play with probably in my team. I've probably played with better players. But I've not had the connection that I've had. The, the people I've put in my team, I've always yeah. I've had a connection with them. I've always felt like there was something between us, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, that, that my team is, is picked on sort of a connection, but also as well, uh, lads are, are very good players. On their ability as well, yeah. I know it's gone for a little bit of chemistry there then, yeah. No problem. Right, you did get a little, I did get a final 11 out of you. And uh, like I say, we can, we can have a few uh, special mentions in there along the way. Right, we'll start off in goal. Who did you go for? Yeah, so in goal, Martin the Bravka. Um, okay. I uh, I I've got to be honest, Rooms. I think that he he he's probably one of the best shot stoppers. Um, he's one of the best shot stoppers that I've I've seen. Really, I mean, you look at the Premier League and some top top goalkeepers, but he really is. Uh, he's a he's he's a he's a really good really good goalkeeper. And I think I I watched you one with John John here and. Um, when he came to Newcastle, he, he made his debut against Man United. Um, we had a great result that day. He pulled off five, six unbelievable saves that he had no right to do, and, and that really set the, set the set the tone for his career so far at Newcastle. And uh, it's been a real pleasure to play with him and top man as well. Yeah, no, no problems with that. Like I say, um, John Joe put him in there as well. So you, know, you might, both must have saw something kid in. You know, to put him in your, in your side. I was going to say as well, on that, you do need to have a good basis of a team. I think you look at all the teams that are successful in the Premier League in the past, they've all had top goalkeepers. So, you know, it bodes well for you guys that if you are going to, you know, try and progress on under Steve Bruce, that, you know, you've, you've got a strong goalkeeper in the goal there. Eh? Definitely, mate, definitely. Right, go on in. It's a back four. We'll start off going from right to left. Um, right back, who have you got in there? So right back is uh, Rude. Have you got me there on camera? Nah, it's gone off there, mate. You're gonna have to just click back on. I think it's the older. Is it the bottom left? Rude, we're gonna have to start this again here. Nah, it'll be all right. Just just get back on. It'll be fine. Just it should on the bottom left. It should say start or stop video. There we go, mate. Yeah, can, can, can you cut? Can you cut this or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. If not, don't worry. About it. <laughs> I, I I ain't got my team here. That's all right. I'll I'll just remind you of them anyway. My team's on my phone. <laughs> Don't worry about it, I'll just remind you anyway. You're a <laughs> you're, you're gonna have to you'll have to get it up and cut it. <laughs> no, it'll be sweet, mate. Anyway, we'll um it, it's look it looks it looks better natural like that. Anyway, right right back, you went for your pal Simon Francis. Yeah, that's what you need to do. <laughs> yeah, no, so <laughs> So um so yeah, so I mean oh, what um what a player man. I, I think uh when I played with him at, at Bournemouth, I don't know how old he was then. He was probably twenty, late twenties, and it it been about been about League One, League Two, and 
and I've got to be honest, when I when I went to Swindon uh, to Bournemouth, um, I thought, wow, this 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 guy's got this guy's got everything, and um, we 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 start. I, I was playing right midfield. I actually started playing on the on the left left back for Bournemouth when I first went there, but so I went there, and, and that championship season when we got promoted was just. The, the 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 relationship we had all all from Eddie Howe really from the work we'd done in training and yeah. and the pattern of play that we had he was so important for me I mean he used to do my running as a right back um, mm. I used to get the ball off a of centre half he'd go around me and I'd just slide him in behind their fullback and nine yeah. times out of ten he'd get in behind and and get a cross in or cut it back or whatever um, but unbelievable athlete and. I think he's now 30, maybe 34, 35 and still still going strong. He's come back from a knee injury. But, yeah, no, great. Really good player. Really good player. Yeah, I was going to mention, obviously, Harry mentioned in his, uh, Harry R mentioned in his one, like, you know, the partnership that you used to add and I think that, you know, the number of assists that you had that season in the championship and then, you know, you took, it in, took that form into the Premier League as well. But, I, yeah, you kind of answered my question. But I was just going to ask, on that, was it, was it by chance or was it something that you generally worked on in training? No, I bruise. We worked on it every day. Yeah, every day yeah. in training, it was like just relentless. The gaffer, the JT, whoever was the coaches, it was normally the gaffer. But I mean, every day we worked on not just patterns, wide play patterns, but throughout the whole pitch, triggers off of the centre half when I came inside or the winger, Pewee, the other side came inside. Um, everything was like clockwork. And I think if, when knowing what we did in the week and then now when I watch those games back, um, you can see it, it reminds you of the actual sessions that you've done in, in preparation for those games it's, uh, really? it was an unbelievable period of my career for sure yeah no, both. right other side left back another Bournemouth lad can you remember who you had <laughs> we've got a reminder yeah. was it Chaz Chaz yeah Charlie Daniels yeah this was a tough one I've got to be honest because uh, I played with Andy Robertson obviously at Scotland yeah and um, I mean what career he's, he's, he's now having and okay. uh, I've got to be honest. Um, I, I put I put Chaz in again, like I said to you at the start, because of chemistry. Um, the I knew every time Chaz went for Chaz and Pewey on the on the left hand side for Bournemouth that year was uh, unbelievable. Not just that year, but for the years I was there, were unbelievable. And um, I always knew that when Chaz got in behind the fullback on the other side, if I can get to the penalty spot. A, there was a good opportunity, good chance I was going to get a shot, cut back on my left foot. And um, I've got to be honest, I owe him probably, probably a good 20 of my goals for assist. He was, um, he knew I was going there, and we, as I say, that chemistry that we had, that I knew he was going to, I knew I, he knew I was there, and I knew where he was going to put it. It was uh, again something that we worked on, but um, without him having the, the quality and the, the the ability to get up and down like he did, um, I'd never. Never got the numbers that I've got that season. Yeah. And also, I love one of um, you know, come back well from some serious injuries as well. Right, Senator Ross. Now, we know you've left the team in the phone, so you can't see him. Can you remember who Senator Ross were? <laughs> I can't lie. Uh, you've got Fabian you know, Sharp. I've got Fabian Sharp, yeah. Yeah, Strabby Sharp. Well, this was a tough one, I've got to be honest again. Because um, Silva didn't play with, I didn't play with loads. Um, so it was, it was one of them. It was like, it was tough to get Silv, Silv in there, but then I, I remember Silv out at Portsmouth. I was at Portsmouth as a kid, as you know. Yeah, I was going to ask, I was going to ask we, we, did you remember him from your Portsmouth days as well, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I always, I always watched Silv in the gym as a professional. Um, I was young and he was, he was an inspiration, really. I mean, I used yeah. to go in the gym, me and Joel Ward used to go in the gym and Silv would be in there every day. The last, yeah. the first one in, last one out. The sort of professional that really I wanted to be, and um, he really, as I say, he was an inspiration. And then I didn't really get the opportunity to play with him at Portsmouth. Uh, I trained a lot with them, yeah. uh, but then he came to Bournemouth, obviously, and uh, that was brilliant because I, I, I managed. To, I actually sat next to him in the dressing room, and he would probably tell you I was always asking him questions and what was it like at City and Everton and this, that and the other and uh, it was um, it was a real real learning curve to see how he dealt with situations off the pitch as well as obviously on the pitch but I remember him I think he only played like maybe 10-15 times for Bournemouth but when he played 
like this guy he didn't get out of second gear like he, he defended he, he wouldn't he wouldn't ever be panicked not like so it would be playing against someone rapid someone rapid would be running behind him and he, he just he's in a great position like he's always covering or he just tidy up and you know, don't get me wrong he was not like he wasn't the best on the ball in the world but what a defender and what a career he had I think I was looking at them a bit like that. I think he's had about 402 Premier League appearances, the most by any outfield foreign player. And I think when you think of some of the foreign players that we've had home here, like that's so much. Yeah. Easier. Yeah, no, it says it all, doesn't it? Exactly. Right, his partner was Fabian Sharp. Yeah, Fabian. Oh, uh, even this was tough. Was, <laughs> I mean, Tom, Tommy Elphick for me was like, he he led the charge, him and Eddie Howard really led the charge for us, yeah. our form of team to get promoted. Um, his mentality is um, I, I feel like his mentality is second to none really he was, his desire to win and, and have succeed was unbelievable so it was tough to leave him out but uh, Fabi I've got to be honest he's one of them players that um, I don't know I never heard of him until he got come to Newcastle he came to Newcastle started training and um and Rusey started training. I'm thinking this guy's unbelievable. Yeah. Like he was just honestly, it it was just like his, his physique. He looks like a footballer. You know, one of them yeah. guys. It just he just looks like a player. <laughs> the way the way he passes, even like in the box, the way he's passing the ball. Out, I'm thinking this yeah. guy's unbelievable. So he's he's he's, he's uh, but he, he's training. He, he don't give the ball away. And he always breaks lines. Like he don't. He won't just play like. To his fullback, he, he wants to, he wants to step in and break lines and things like that. It's not just every time, and his ability on the ball is just unbelievable. And then um, it took him probably five six months to get in the team. Got in the team, and then when he got in the team, it was just it, he made a huge difference to us. He just set us up. He set up our attacks, started our attacks. Um, he was always looked at. Can he defend as well? Um, and he does this like shin tackle that he does. He like dives in, you think, no, don't dive in, but somehow he gets the ball more often than not. And uh, yeah, really, really, he's a, he's a total football player. And for me, he could play at the top, top level. Yeah, I remember, I think he got goals against Burnley, worldly, wasn't it? Yeah, he scored, a, yeah, he's, he's, got a, he's got a strike and a half on him. Yeah, no, nah, no problem. Right, midfield three, you've gone 4 3 3. Can you remember your midfield three players? Yeah, well, I've got H in there because otherwise you get the arm. Um, Go on then, we'll start with, we'll start with where we are. No, I say you get the arm, but honestly, what what a, what a um, what a player for us that season he was. He was yeah. he was like the heart and soul of the dressing room. Um, the on the pitch, he scored some unbelievable goals. I remember an absolute worldy at Watford. Yeah, uh, he scored a banger against Middlesbrough. So he scored some really good and important goals as well. He scored five on the bounce at one stage, I think. Yeah, I remember. I think he, 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 Go on. Yeah, no, I remember, remember that. I remember him scoring. He had a really good run goal scoring wise. Yeah, yeah, he scored. He, he scored five and bats on fire. But um, just he set the tempo for his runes really. And, and uh, I've never told him this because I, I I couldn't tell him it because he never shut up about it. But he actually he inspired me how to press because I I used to I used to like pressing fullbacks and the manager used to say to me, Matt, you need to press, press. And I now part of my game, a big part of my game is pressing. Yeah, and. Uh, I used to watch H and he used to, I've never really seen a player press like him. When he presses, he don't, he don't get like a yard from the ball and then stop pressing. No, he's like, so he's low, dude. Oh, like, he gets <laughs> inside your body. And like, <laughs> Funny though, have you ever noticed it? Oh, mate, all day long. Like, he, he presses you and he won't just press you and like hold you, hold, hold you off and like just let you go in a direction, which most players do. But like, he's kicking your ankle and... Or, or chomping at your calves and that, and the, the amount of players I say, oh, this guy's a prick or whatever, and it's like, <laughs> it's not, but he, he, on the pitch he is. And I've got to be honest, probably that, it was the, it was the first sort of, um, the first championship season I was injured at the start, and I remember watching him and thinking, like, I, I need to press fullbacks like that, because the, yeah. the, like centre midfielders, they couldn't live with it, and he'd yeah. sometimes he'd jump out, he'd, he'd go and press the centre arm, and you're looking at it from the, I'm looking at it from the stands injured, Thinking, where's this guy going here? He's going to press the centre up, <laughs> and he get a regain. He get a regain on their box. <laughs> it's honestly, he was mad. He, he pressed so high, and he would have set us off. And he continued that in the season we got promoted. And as I say, the, the, I took, 
I took a lot from from his press that he did. I took a lot from that, and I've used it to good effect in in, in throughout my career certainly. Yeah, no, he'll be pleased with that. Like I say, you might not hear not, you might not hear the end of that one. To be fair, I was going to say <laughs> on that. Have you watched his one on on my show or not? No. You haven't. Right, he mentions it. I was going to give you a chance to reply because he mentions how close you are off the pitch as well. And uh, yeah. I know you both I know you both very well. And uh, he mentions that a time when uh, he got the boys to have you off with a little bit of eggy boff. I was just giving, yeah, you, the right, I was just giving you the right to reply. Can you think of any embarrassing stories about him? <laughs> well, there is. <laughs> oh, 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 this one, but you had to, this one of them, but you had he did have me off the first day, I remember it. I was thinking, I was thinking, this guy's not even looked at me here. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously, and I knew as well, I knew a few lads, and like, I spoke to the, the, player, the fellow that signed me, Tom Mitchell, and I knew Tom. He was like, oh, H is like the, the, the dressing room, he's a man. And, and I was like, this guy ain't even looked at me here the first day. And uh, yeah, he, 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 he boffed me, but um, <laughs> I've got a bad one, a, a good one about him, but I don't know if he had to be there or what, but. But he's in the dressing room one day and um, I don't know what happened, but H had done something. And the manager was saying, look, you, you, you can't do this or whatever. And I don't know if it's something in training or whatever. And H just out of nowhere just stood up. And the lads, the, if the lads that were there will, will laugh at this and I think you had to be there. But H just stood up and said, yeah, I'll give you a 10 for that. And jumped down and started giving him 10 press-ups. <laughs> All that's what I was going on here. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Um, again, I think you had to be there for it, but yeah, that was a funny one. And, uh, to be fair, like I say, I'll give you the right to reply. And uh, yeah, top player, obviously, I, I grew up with Mitch Holt and he was a year above me. And uh, again, another one, similar to yourself, deserves everything that you, uh, that you get out of the game. Right, moving on. Can you remember the, who's the other two in midfield with him? In midfield, did I go? I went Scott Brown, I think, didn't I? You have gone Scott Brown, we'll go with him then. Yeah, Scott Brown, I mean. Um, Obviously, I went with Scotland uh, the year. It was, this, it was a season with Bournemouth. We were getting promoted. So, 2016, is it? 17. Um, and I went with Scotland. And uh, Brownie, he was, he was the first, I remember turning up to my hall first, first time I met up with the squad and obviously nervous. And it was a bit like, what's going on here? I didn't really, I was out of my depth really at the time. And um, I remember Brownie getting out of a taxi at the at the entrance and he sort of just gave me the eyeballs and I was thinking oh fucking hell what's that what, like what's this going to be like yeah. and uh, I think the, the week before he'd been in all the papers in Scotland he's been steaming outside the strippers or something with pizza and, <laughs> and I'm thinking like that's all I've seen like I've landed at the airport seen all these headlines about Brownie and I've seen him first as I've turned up I'm thinking oh this guy's a lunatic man and then he's eyeballed me so I'm, I'm sitting in the room that night I'm thinking I went to go down for dinner, dead nervous. And I've gone down for dinner, right? And, and, uh, and to be fair, he was sound, he was a really, really good guy and a uh, really good captain. One of those captains that do everything for everything for all of the lads. He, he, he wouldn't like, wasn't just one or two of the lads that he'd look, he'd look after everyone, make sure everyone's happy. And, yeah. uh, he's a re really good guy, but uh, most importantly, obviously, he's on the pitch and... Uh, um, as I say earlier, two runes off off the thing there. We had um we had a real good go at the Euros that that sort of era with Strachan and um it was it was a uh, was un we was unlucky but Brownie was just set the tempo. Obviously, it's, sometimes it's tricky to go away. You go away and like all clubs are different, but Brownie just every day exactly the same, hundred percent mad tempo with everyone, treated everyone the same. There was a lot of Celtic lads didn't treat them any different to anyone else. Just a really, really good player, good guy, and his ability. I don't think that I actually think that because he's because um, he's been at Selwyn all his career. I think people in England, people I speak to in England, they're like, oh, what's, "What's Brown? What was he like?" What was... Yeah. And they, they don't understand how good he is. Like, I think he could have. I think he said he could have gone to Spurs at some point in his career, and he, he didn't in the end. But I think if he did, he could have had a real, real top career in, in the Premier League. For me, he had so much ability and. Um, as I say, controlled games, not just with his aggression and his mentality and his, his desire to win the ball back and tackle and set the tempo, but also his, his range of passing is fantastic. Obviously, he can tackle and he can make a nuisance of himself as well. He had everything. Yeah, for sure, and like you say as well, you know, you can't punish someone for staying at you know, a great club like Celtic, can you? And I think I've worked out between Celtic and Hibs, I think he had over, I think he's on nearly 700 appearances and 
Fifty-five yeah. Scotland. So no, I think you yeah, so, yeah. spoke about everything there. So no, no problems with him being in there. Right, the last centre midfielder I looked you out was John Joe Shelby. Your yeah, I can't remember that one. Yeah, no, nah, Shelby. I mean, uh, for me, for me, I've said to him so many times. I tell you that I said to him, if you just, if you just got your head down and just focus solely on football, forgot about golf and whatever else he does. Just, <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? I said, it, like, he's mad. He'll play golf, play golf like three times a week. I'm like, John, you can't do that. He's like, no, no, I feel better, Matty. I feel better. I'm like, it's impossible. But what a player, man. What a player. I, I've been at Newcastle now for four years. I think it's my fourth season. Yeah. And I've honestly seen him inside a box no more than 10 times. Like, that's how good he is. Like, we do boxes every day. This guy, just natural ability to... To just see passes, to receive the ball, to move the ball, yeah. like just uh, you know yourself, Bruins. Like as a kid, he was on. But I remember playing against him as a kid. Yeah, I think he was fourteen. We were playing Charlton under sixteens at Portsmouth, and I think he scored a hat trick or something. He was unbelievable. And yeah. uh, obviously, he's got his moves, and and he's ended up at Newcastle. But I say to him every it's a very very regular, John. If you had your head screwed on, you could play for Barcelona so easily. Like he's that good in he room, do you? So. Yeah. He's that good, and uh, he's got everything. He's got the short one, and he, he at Newcastle now he hits longer passes and, and tougher passes, and he's like he's the one we look to to open teams up and yeah. and create. But I feel like if he was playing in, and that's no disrespect to us at Newcastle, but I feel like if he was playing in like a Barcelona or Real Madrid, like it, you can imagine, it, it just he I think he'd blow blow teams away with his ability. But obviously, you got to um, you got to have it. Every, everything in the right place, and and uh, he likes his golf too much, doesn't he? Yeah, well, to be fair, like I say, in the um, even in when he come on the show, like he, I think he admits himself. He, I think he used the Brack uh, your goalkeeper as, a, as an example. He said, you know, does everything by the book, and I don't. So listen, he'll, he'll admit. Oh, that. Yeah. He'll no, admit that's why I say. That's why I say it now because, like you say, it'd he, be his first one to say. Hundred percent. He, he says to me, "I know, mate." He said, "But this is what <laughs> I'm like. This is what I'm like. I'm like, I don't know, but." Imagine if you wanted to, you could. Yeah, of course. But even with that, though, Matt, I'll have to ask you because I want to get your thoughts. And I feel like sometimes maybe I'm a little bit biased because I've grown up with him. But in terms of the player that he is and stuff, and you know, I asked him about it and he seems to be a little bit, I'm confused, but a little bit not sure what's going to happen in terms of the England thing. But, you know, you, you play with him and then you play against the lads that are keeping him out of the England squad. Do you, do you feel like there should be more opportunities for him for England? Yeah, again, Ruse, I think, um, I think, especially, especially in the last recent years, it's like at England, it's a bit like, to me anyway, it seems England want, it, like, characters really have been, have been, have been beating out the game, haven't they? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like every, that every manager wants a reliable, ultra yeah. professional. And, be, and to be honest, it, it, I understand why, because, Clubs can't take risks on, on players now that have got bad reputation and things like that because it, 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 all of a sudden it affects your sponsors, your, yeah. your corporate deals and things like that. So there is that. Um, there is that. And I understand why clubs and, and, and obviously the, the nation now look at things like that. So I think that, yes, I think in the past, he's, he's, for me, he's had bad rep and, and bad press and really that he doesn't deserve because... Yeah, I, I've got to be honest. When I when I went, there, I was thinking, what's what's this cat going to be like? And mm. I mean, Rooms, to be honest, mate, he's been bang on. He, he keeps himself to himself. He's yeah. got a lovely family that he loves, mm. um, and and he just he's a family man, really. He likes to play golf, and yeah. and he's a top top footballer. So for me, with England, has he got the ability for sure? Is it my decision to pick him? No. So yeah, yeah, um, cool. I can't comment. But for for sure, he, he's got ability. He's got the ability in abundance. Yeah, not sure. And I feel like, you know, that, that sort of side of him where, you know, he's a maverick type player, I think sometimes that makes, makes him the player he is, you know? Definitely, definitely. Right, we'll move on to your front three. Now, you made a late change in your front three. Can you remember any of them? <laughs> yeah, really, this, this was tough. This was really tough. Um, Wilkes, was, uh, he's in there because Callum without Wilkes, without Wilkes, I don't know if uh, any of us lads at Bournemouth would have played in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, that key, yeah? Sorry? That key, yeah? Was he that key that season? I was going to ask anyway. That was my question. How key was he? Yeah. yeah. 
by rooms like this guy. I think he won 13 penalties this year in the championship <laughs> season. I think he won. Honestly, he scored, well, I don't know what got, did he score 23 goals or something? I think, yeah, when I've done Aries one, I'm sure it was 20, yeah, 20, something like that, yeah. yeah so he scored 23 goals, but forget his goals, he won 13 penalties. <laughs> uh, 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 you have to check that stat. Right, I'll find out, I'll find out. It was, it was over 10 for sure, and ruined this guy, man. He, he came in, and I'm thinking, this, this, this kid's like a sprinter. Like, he, he ran like a sprinter. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Uh, he does. Yeah, and he was so raw, but... Ed, he couldn't have fell in the hands of a better coach, obviously. No, of course, of course, of course. And, and the, the, the just hours and hours and hours on the training pitch, where to run, when to run, the trigger to run. H had a good one with him, actually. He used to get it off Charlie Daniels or the fullback yeah. and just flip it around the corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, centre-half just could not live a bit. I remember, I think there was one at Bolton, the night, the night we got promoted. He's come in, he flips it around the corner and Wilson's won a penalty. Yeah. Uh, did he win a penalty? We won a penalty, or we, we maybe got a chance or something, but just the, the, this guy's desire to score goals, like it was all he thought about was goals, and he was a, the personality that he had. he's got rooms, is like, you can yeah. see why he's gone onto the top, he's, he's got full belief in himself, um, and he just loved scoring goals, just loved it. Yeah, no, definitely, and like I say, I think I mentioned it on Harry one when he put him in the side, for me, you know, listen, everyone knows about him as a player, but to, to come, I mean, obviously I've done my crucial meeting amongst myself and to come back from two of them and go on to play for England just says everything about him as a character as well, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Right, can you remember the other two then who were either side of him or up there with him? Yeah, Rondon. Yeah, Solomon Rondon, we'll start off with him. Oh, this guy's just, <laughs> just a beast. Like, I mean, you, you, it's probably, it's just a beast room. It's like, I remember Rafa being desperate to get him, absolutely desperate to get him. And I, met, I remember him at West Brom when he, he, I think he scored a hat-trick against Liverpool or someone for West Brom. Right. I remember thinking, this guy's a machine. Mm. And uh, that was like three years before we signed him. And then um, he didn't really play at West Brom. Anyway, we got him at Newcastle, came in, he was overweight, dead, dead heavy, um, the, 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 didn't really train, came in, got injured, played a few, got injured. Didn't really like get started, but this guy's like pure desire to just fight. Like it, it, it just want to fight in training. It want to pin people. Um, him and Jamal used to every day in training just be they'd be going at each other like ah, yeah. oh, it was a joke, mate. Honestly, it was unbelievable, and um, it just changed our team completely. Like we were that season. Everyone, everyone said it. We took a lot of lot of stick for it, but. It got us success. We were solid, compact, never got beat more than one or two if we did get beat. But um, this guy came in and just gave us an outlet. Like we could, we could just chuck it down the channel. We could flick it into his feet, whatever, cross it from deep. This guy was on the end of it, making, causing havoc and, and creating chances. And um, Perez, Iose Perez was one that, I, again, I desperately wanted to get in the team, but he didn't, he didn't make it. But um, <laughs> them, them two up front complemented each other so well because Io, as you know, is is very lightweight and, and tactically yeah, yeah. very, very, very aware of getting in the pocket and spaces and found spaces really well. And him and Ronnie just just clicked. And I think towards the end of that season, um, they they probably scored fifteen goals in the second half of the season between them, yeah. and 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 a few assists as well. So they were they were pivotal to that that season success and. Ronnie was, as I say, Ronnie was the main figurehead for that. Yeah, uh, and I think when I was uh, doing my work, he, he got player of the year. I think it was the first. I think he's the first forward to get that since Alan Shearer. So, the new yeah, that's everything, didn't it? Really about no, it. Was last player to complete your eleven. This was the last minute change. This was the last minute. <laughs> this was when your managerial um, conundrum kicked in, mate. You you made a last minute change today. I think it was, or was it yesterday? Yesterday, yesterday. Uh, I, I just think this one is like, this one's chemistry, as I said. But yeah. you, you could, the two it was between, it was between, I uh, had a few to be fair. Dwighty, obviously Dwighty, everyone knows, yeah. top, 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 top uh, goal scorer, if you like. And his movement's unbelievable. Um, so Dwighty was there. I had uh, IOZ. Kingy was a, was a yeah. man that I had in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the unlucky, unfortunate one. But I didn't play. I didn't play with Kingy too much. It was only the first season in the Premier League, really, that I played with Kingy because yeah. when Kingy came, we were in the Championship, and um, 
and Kingy never really played in the champ. He was he was in and out of the team. Yeah. Um, it, it was it was more more Pewy on the left with, with Chaz, but um, Kingy was the first season as champ. He really, when he first signed for us, he was so raw, but again, fell into the hands of Eddie Howe. And yeah. look at the player he's become. It's, 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 no, um, it's no, uh, no coincidence, if you like. So, yeah, now Kingy was, Kingy was in my team, but I took him out. <laughs> um, the more I thought, I thought about Yanni. And Yanni um, yeah, yeah, you gone for, yeah? Yeah, and Kermigan, and uh, Rooms, this guy was like, if, if you could call him, if you could, if you could make him anything that like has been before, he's Eric Cantona. He was like, really? He had, he had like, he had this, this nerve about him that he was so calm in any situation. <laughs> like, giving the ball, and he, honestly, giving the ball with five players around him, and he just like put his bum in, he'd get his, like, he had massive ass, he'd get his ass in. He'd twist and turn, um, and he just set, and he had such a good understanding and such a good mentality, and um, yeah, just I love playing with him. He's one of the players that I just, when he played, I thought I'm going to play well today because I can just wrap it into Yanni, and obviously yeah. you know me, I couldn't really ever beat a player down a wing with pace, so uh, I was impressed <laughs> with that. So I used to come inside, wrap it into Yanni's feet, follow my pass, and. Honestly, used to I, I scored my one of my favourite goals was at Charlton away on the last day of the season. Yeah, got past him, set to Yanni. He literally stopped it with his studs, and I curled it in the bottom corner. And, yeah. and it did that. It did that every week for me. And um, him and Brett Pittman were rotated that season. We got promoted, and well, I mean, the manager played it down to a team. We, I don't know how he kept them both happy. Really, they were both like they played two out for one, in for two. It was mad, and they were both smiling, both happy, and. Uh, but yeah, Yanni, what a character. And he, he scored some big, big goals. Took pen- he missed the penalty actually in a big game. And then, but you don't, he's not one of them players that you go missing. Like, he'd be there, he'd day, you take the ball. Um, top, top player and great guy. Really good guy. Yeah, I was going to say, he must be famous for his penalties. I remember him missing one uh, against Cardiff, I think. Cardiff, wasn't it? When he dinked it in the bar. Oh, he dinked it, didn't he? He says, he says, no, he says no, the lads ever spoke to him. No way. Really? I, see, I, see. I, I, can't, I can't make him wrong though, mate. I can't make Honestly, him. imagine thinking of pending that. Oh, mate. What was it? What was it, it was in the playoffs? Mate, can you? Was it the playoffs? It was in the playoffs from Reading against Cardiff, I think. Yeah, it was. It was in the playoffs. I remember yeah. it clear as day because I remember thinking, mate, if that was a teammate of mine, mate, I'd be I'd yeah, be yeah. killer. Yeah, he said none of his, none of his teammates spoke to him. Yeah, few really? Cool. Imagine, yeah, doing but, Andy but, or, imagine doing Andy Orr, mate, can you? Oh, your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, that's superb, mate. Um, that's your team done and we've in quite a quick time, so it's good. I can get some questions in a little bit similar to how I've done it with John Joe because I'm sure all the, um, you know, like I say, I think I keep saying it, people will be bored of my voice, but two main reasons I've done this. One for all the, you know, the board football fans, board football nuts at home who want to have some material on, you know, various clubs, the Bournemouth, the Swindons and Newcastle and stuff, and also for younger players. So I'll have some serious questions and some fun ones. First one, Matty, will be, we spoke about players um, you played with there. What about in terms of players you played against? So, can I have a full back who you found it hard against and then maybe just one player who stood out, you know, from anywhere on the pitch? Yeah, um, for me, Carl Walker, when he was at Tottenham, yeah. played against him at Tottenham for, uh, I think it was, I think it was, Ball, it would have been Bournemouth for my first season. I'm sure he was still, yeah, it was, it was Tottenham he was at. But this, this, this guy for me was, it, you can imagine we, I'm not blessed with pace I felt like I was sharp but yeah. not blessed with pace and this guy was just I think I couldn't get I couldn't get a yard with him Runes. he was he comes so tight um, he, he was just he was just electric to be honest and obviously going the other way I remember playing I don't know if it was Tottenham it might have been City Rooms that he was at when I when I when I remember this might have been yeah, City I would have thought, yeah, I would have thought by the time yeah, it, been, it might have been City yeah yeah, it was City, I think, and honestly, rooms. This guy was just, just running, runs in like the the run that me and Frano used to do in the in the Championship. Really, this guy was doing it in the Premier League and just annihilating fullbacks and wingers. Really, and yeah, uh, turn turn wingers into fullbacks. Didn't didn't yeah. that City team? Um, yeah, he's for me. He was the at the time probably two for two three years ago was the best fullback in the in the world probably. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think anyone would argue with you there, mate. 
Um, what about in terms of just another player you've come up against and you just thought, wow, like, what a player he is? You know, it might not be near you on the pitch, but just in terms of the, probably one of the best players you've played against in the Premier League. Yeah, the best player. Um, De Bruyne or Aguero for me. Yeah. Like Aguero, he was just, I don't know, he, he didn't even have the ball. He wouldn't have the ball and you're still thinking, even as a winger, like you're, you're playing against obviously City, but you're still thinking, <laughs> you, you, he didn't have the ball and you're thinking, don't let him get the ball because <laughs> if he gets the ball in, that, in the pocket or in them areas, in and around the box, you're dead. And um, yeah, for me, him and De Bruyne were like, just another another level for me. Really? They're the best players by far, yeah, that I've played against, for sure. For wow. sure. Right, that's cool. Aguero, he's got a bigger ass than me and you, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Pulling me in your boat. No chance. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked my bollocks off for years to not have a big ass. What's that? <laughs> I've worked my bollocks off for years to not have a big ass. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think you might have mentioned one a minute ago, but I was going to ask, what was your fa- what is your favourite goal? Um, my favourite goal has to be my my first Premier League goal, runs, um, yeah. Jess Volley against Sunderland for Bournemouth. Oh yes, what a goal! I remember texting you actually because you didn't uh, you, you had a couple of games you didn't score when you won the Premier League. When I think it was about fourth or fifth game you scored. Yes, yeah, yeah, it was a few games. Yeah, in. Great goal, and, great goal. Um, yeah. yeah, that that's probably my my obviously first Premier League goal. It was an unbelievable strike. Um, one one in one, you hit and you could hit ten of them in training that don't go in, and then boom, one falls to you. So yeah, no, that that was my that was my favourite goal for sure. Yeah, no, no problems with that. I remember that now. Now you've mentioned it, fantastic goal. And also on that, that probably leads me on to my next question, really, because I was going to say you had an early taste of playing in the Premier League with Portsmouth. I think it was a few appearance, but wasn't it? A few appearances. Yes. With yeah, yeah. When you were younger. And then, obviously, you know, you had to drop down the divisions to play. You know, I know you went on loan at Dagenham and then I think Notts County. And then, you know, finally went, signed permanently for Swindon and done, and, and done really well there. So, you know, you had to drop down the division. I was going to say, like, did you always believe that you'd make it back to the top? Um, yeah, I, I did, Runes. I, I don't know. I, I felt like Portsmouth was a real good eye-opener for me and an experience because... I was young at Portsmouth, but I trained with the first team an awful lot. I was like, I remember 14, 15, I was, I was always down with the first team training and yeah. and they, was, they had a good team. Like, when I was young, coming through, they had like yeah. Peter Crouch, Defoe, Diara, yeah. uh, Montari, Pedro Mendes, Sol Campbell, Glenn Johnson, all these top, top players. And I remember training, I was miles out of my depth rooms. Yeah. But I remember training thinking, this is the level. And like yeah. these boys never gave the ball away. Like you do a keep ball, you couldn't get a ball back. Yeah. And the, the physiques, I was always in awe of their physique. I was like, I'm like this chubby little teenager. Yeah. I'm, I'm meant to be one, I'm meant to be like one of these in three years, really, like 18, yeah. 17, 18. Yeah. And, and I was thinking, I'm miles away. And it gave me, gave me a determination. And I was lucky, I had a good youth team. And Wardy, Ward, Joe Ward was, he's at Palace now, but cut from the same cloth, really, mentality, just do anything to get to the top and be the best he could possibly be. And we, we used to go in the gym together. We used to, we used to have, compete in training. Obviously, that's what you do with your teammates and um, really drove each other on, really. And as I say, and then I went on my loans and my loans were good. Although Side Ferry said I was the worst player to go at swimming. <laughs> I've had to, Runes, I've had to, I've had to call him there because he said, right, I was the worst player. <laughs> get on this. He said I was the worst player at Swindon that season. Ask, ask him how many games I played. <laughs> I, made, I made four appearances, Runes. I made four appearances. And I listen, I went there in the February, I made four appearances and then went back because Portsmouth had no players. And Sai says I was the worst player. I rang him. I said, oh, I said, I said, I said, oh tight, I've just seen Ruse's finger. He said I was the worst player. I said, I only played four games. Honestly. He said, do you know what he said? He said, yeah, but it made the podcast good, didn't it? That's what he said. Honestly, what a prick. And he wants me back in the world. Unbelievable. Oh mate, no, listen, that's a uh, that's different class. And to be fair. You know, I asked the question and um, 
you know, I asked the question and the answer, you know, because I was lucky enough, I was lucky enough to be around you at that time. Because, you know, a lot of people and listen, I think everyone sees things differently after, you know, years down the line, but a lot of people give, you know, the Canio the credit for your form at Swindon and stuff. But I, you know, I was in the dressing room with you every, every, pretty much nearly every day and I actually sat next to you most days. And, you know, for me, I always say, listen, the Canio had a great effect on yourself in terms of propelling you back on to get to the top. But for me, I think it was something that, <clears throat> that you had installed in you. And uh, like I say, for me, you deserve everything you get, uh, everything you get, mate. No, nah, cheers, mate. But yeah, no, nah, the Canio was massive for me, Runes, I've got to be honest. Yeah, but he, I feel um, like you had it anyway, though, mate. Don't get me wrong, he was big for you, but I feel like that was just installed in you anyway. Yeah, I did. I had, I've always had desire. I always want to be the best, as I say, the best up. Be, just be the best up and be really. And I was always willing to give up any everything it took and yeah. um, make sacrifices and and some that others didn't want to make, but I wanted to make them. And probably why I've gone on and, and other players I've played with haven't. Exactly that, mate. Totally agree. Right, and that's why I'm doing podcasts now while you're sitting in your mansion, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, I want to tell you what I want to talk about next. Next subject will be will be your moves, actually, because I think they're interesting ones. You know, I was at Swindon at the time when you left uh, to go to Bournemouth, and it was a little bit like, I think, you know, I think I was sitting around one of the lads' house one night, and someone went, oh, mate, he's gone to Bournemouth. It was like, you know, out of blue, and then the next thing that, you know, you was, you was doing an interview with the Bournemouth website, or wherever it was, and it was like, you know, we just lost our best player. It was... It was a real strange one. So, you know, can you remember much about that? How that happened and how quickly it happened for you? Yeah, um, it came out of the blue room, to be honest. I was, um, I was, I sort of knew of interest from Bournemouth. Um, I, I, I'd heard a few things from my agent at Bournemouth one year, and I think they bid for me the window before. Never went. I was really happy at, at Swindon, as you know. Um, we were flying that season. The Canio was, I loved the Canio. Um, and, and, and it was all good and then uh, I got a call from my agent one day I think I can't remember what day it was but I got a call from my agent one day saying Matty basically um, Swindon are getting sold they're in financial trouble um, there's a takeover going through but basically if, if they don't sell a player um, if they don't sell a player by you then they're going to go into administration or, or uh, there'll, be, there'll be some sort of um, difference in your wages, like a deal to be done in the lads' wages because they've got no cash. Um, so for me, it was like, it's one of them rooms. I was thinking, well, if I stay here, I'm not going to get paid. Um, and at the time, obviously, it's one of them. You know, it's like you, you can't afford to not get paid when you're playing at that level. Yeah. And... Um, and it, it was one of them for me as I, obviously I'm, I'd worked, I'd, I'd been on like a trial sort of thing when I was 17 to Bournemouth and Eddie Howe was there then and with the same mentality that he's always had desire as a coach with Kevin Bond and um, I, 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 I knew him from that and I always, I always thought Pop Bournemouth would be a nice one, it's local to me and um, it, for me Rooms it was a no-brainer because as I say I was driving home and training my age and said look this is real now. Bournemouth want to take you. They bid for you. Swindon, the the the, the I think it was um, is it Jeremy Jeremy Ray and Andrew Black was the chairman yeah. and the owner. They basically said you you we've accepted an offer for you if you want to go and sort personal terms. And I remember to this day I went straight down. I was on my way home. I went straight down the A34. Um, and instead of going off to uh, Portsmouth where I lived, I went to Bournemouth. I went in the village hotel, sorted out personal terms, and and that was it. It was it was done, and um, I've got to be honest with you. I was it was one of them. I was like, I was really looking forward to playing for Bournemouth because I, I knew a lot about the club being local, and I, knew I had a few friends. Joe Partington was my close pal growing up, and he played there, and um, Danny Hollands, and so I had a lot of connections with the club. So I was really excited, but at the same time, I did I, I left Swindon with a little bit of a heavy heart because yeah. Uh, you, as you know, we had a we had a great group of lads there, but a, yeah. some really good players. Some players that I mean, I've, I've seen size one with he's done with you and mm. uh, me, Cads and Si. That honestly was some of the most enjoyable football I've ever played. I remember getting the ball and thinking we're going to have the ball here until we finish this attack. It was like, <laughs> honestly, it, that's how it was. That ruins it. Oh, it was mate, I, remember, I remember, like, I remember having, a, I remember playing a home game once. I think we played Akron, and like. 
it was just yeah, it was like that must have how it felt playing for Man United every week, like just having the ball for ninety minutes. Like it was, oh, it was yeah, just that's what people, I think. It was like that's that what every I'm game. Like, Looking back, that's exactly what I think. Like Cads, yeah. Cads for me, Cads was. Oh, I mean, it just had everything. It, it, it was unbelievable, and he taught me a lot as well about movements yeah. and like the yeah. running. Used so I used to make an unbelievable running behind the fullback yeah. and the centre half from centre midfield, and like used to just open up a huge pocket. He probably did it on your side as well. Yeah, He'd open up a huge pocket of space, and I remember them runs. And uh, uh, I tell centre midfielders that I play with now, look, yeah. when I get the ball wide, make that run because. It yeah. opened so many options up for, for you on the ball. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, that was a uh, it was it was tough to leave Swindon, but um, it was a decision really that um, yeah it was out of my hands and and obviously it's uh, it, the minute I got there I could realise that the, the, the club was a club that really wanted to kick on and and, and progress and um, it was all it all fitted perfectly with 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 my career as well as with Bournemouth and, and the rest of the group. Yeah, no, of course. Right, I tell you what, we'll do it in order then as well, because I'm just going to do your move, but we'll do it in order. So you go to Bournemouth, and listen, I don't think it was a, a big surprise to people that, that you went on to win League One and get promotion from League One, because I think the, the, the squad that you had in the end that season when you won it was you know, tremendous. Listen, great achievement, but I don't think too many people were surprised in terms of the squad that you had. But the following of two seasons later, you get promoted from the Championship with Bournemouth. I mean, I think I asked Harry when I had him on, so the best question I could probably ask, I'll ask the same question to you, Liz. At what point did you think, right, this is real, like this, this, this could happen here, like we, we, we're going to get promoted? Yeah, I've got to be honest, Runes. Uh, the first, as I said earlier, the first season, the first season in the championship, I was injured at the start, pulled my five. Mm. And then um, I was obviously gutted to not be starting the championship season. Yeah. Um, and I was watching, thinking, this, this doesn't look as, as big a jump as what I thought it was going to be. And there was obviously, what was the most daunting thing was there was players, a lot of players, big clubs playing in the, a lot of players, big clubs playing in the championship from the Premier League and, and, and real good players and real big clubs that had, had expectations. And we had none, uh, just survived really. Yeah. And I think we finished, I think we might have finished ninth that season. Yeah. Uh, first season in the Premier League and I got back fit. And, uh, yeah, first season in the championship, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got back fit and got in the team, and and I don't know. I felt like we were really good. We we were we were better than most of the teams we were playing. Maybe we didn't have the experience of how to win a game or how to see a game out. But yeah, when you're talking about football and football players, like whether we played in League One, League Two, or of our careers, like really we were a better team than most of the teams we were playing against. Yeah, and that was my initial. That's my initial feeling of the championship. So then. The second season, I remember going away thinking that the manager, the, the manager is what the manager is. Like he's ultra professional. Be as, be the best you can be, basically. So I went away. That had rubbed off on me in the first two years I'd been there. Went away. Came back that pre-season. We did pre-season at Camford School, and I, I was actually looking at photos in, on my laptop the other day of that pre-season. And I remember, the, you know, you know, you look at a photo and you remember the feeling rooms. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was doing, and honestly, I was so fit. I remember. I remember the, the manager saying, oh, we got a run or we got this or we got that. And I remember thinking, no problem. But I've got this. I'm so <laughs> fit. No problem. And I remember doing finishing drills after, the, like, you know, pre-season runs. Most of the lads have gone. Yeah. We'd do pre-season runs and then we'd do a finishing drill after it. It was like the yeah. lads were so fit. We were so fit rooms. And obviously, if you've got a fit squad, I feel like you don't make as many. If, you, if you're fit, you don't make as many mistakes. You don't have as much fatigue. It's, yeah. it's all a knock-on effect. And, our base was that everyone was so fit. And yeah. then we, we had, as, as everyone knows, that season, we just built momentum, got to Christmas. I think we were flying. Or, well, we're not flying at Christmas, but just after Christmas, we started. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think we were struggling, actually, till Christmas. And just after, yeah. we started flying. And rooms, we just never looked back. Honestly, we, 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 I, think we, I think we never looked back because of how we were winning. We were battering teams. Like, teams yeah. will come. We aren't all right, really. Teams will come and say, right, Bournemouth want the ball, but you might nick one on the counter-attack. So that's what yeah. we do. And more often than not, we're 2-0 up before they, they and then they turn into plan B. It's like, yeah. it's too late for teams. And uh, mm-hmm. that, 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 that year was the best year of my life, I've got to be honest. I, yeah, obviously, cool. I got promoted at, um, I got promoted at uh, Newcastle as well. And that was, a, that was an unbelievable success and, and really enjoyed that. But 
the way we did it with Bournemouth and the expectation that no one really ever thought it would happen was an um, unbelievable achievement. And the group that we had as well, it's all, everyone worked so hard and, as I said, sacrificed everything for, for, for football and, and for that promotion. It was, it was well, well worth it. No secret, is it? Hard work, hard work, mate. It's brilliant. Right, I'll never just two promotions from the same division with Bournemouth and Newcastle. Sort of kind of maybe answer my question there, but I was going to say, you know, in terms of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to say what one was better, but I mean, it must have been quite different because, you know, with Bournemouth, the expectation wasn't there. But then with Newcastle, and, you know, we spoke about the Bournemouth one, so we'll leave it at that, but Newcastle one must have been some feeling, you know, with a, with a big club like that, expectations every week. Yeah. To, you know, you're expected to win that league and go straight back up. What was that season like, mate? Yeah, again, like you said exactly, it was, uh, the expectation was like, as soon, as soon as you got there, I think we signed me, Dwighty, Kieran Clark, uh, Big Grant Hanley, and maybe one other, I can't remember the other one, but we signed maybe one other, uh, and Dwighty. Mm-hmm. Would I say Dwighty? Yeah, no. did, we, you Hayden, did you sign Hayden? Was he one of the signings? Isaac Hayden, sorry, yeah. Isaac Hayden. Yeah. So we signed basically like a spine of the team, really. Yeah. And then we had obviously good players there already, very good players there already. And um, it took, we took a little while to get going because uh, we had a lot of bodies that had been relegated, like Sissoko, Gini Wanyaldum, players, Daryl Yamath, that wanted to get out, wanted to get away. So, got to be honest, I went there as a, and gone from Bournemouth where everything was so professional, so religious. Yeah. It was like, it was like everything was so regimented at Bournemouth that everyone knew what they were doing. They knew the vitamins they were taking, the protein they were having. Everything was in a plan. I went to Newcastle and it was like, got to be honest, it was like, I was like, this is a shambles here. Like, some players don't want a beer, some players, and I've been used to such a tight knit group that yeah. everyone just do well. And I was, I was a bit bamboozled, room, and then um, obviously Rafa had so much experience and um, he, he sorted it out so quickly and so, so calmly, room. Like, he's so calm yeah. and he sorted it all. And before you knew it, it was like Christmas and we were flying. Mm. And uh, and then it was it was really all about just managing the expectation of people are talking about how oh, we could win it by this time or win it by this time. Yeah. If we were eleven points clear, maybe at one point, yeah. then it was like obviously then you got to try and manage the dressing room. The dressing room like oh, we, we're done, we're done, and you're thinking, yeah, That's like, do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were talking about Vegas and this. And <laughs> Honestly, you can imagine. I'm thinking, lads, this this isn't done yet. Like we've got a few good teams in this league that could maybe catch us. Yeah, and um, but yeah, no, the, the the group was we had a really good group, really, really good, really good, uh, really good teams and top top quality. Um, Dwighty was that season. Dwighty was just another level, really. Like anything he touched, just went in. Yeah. He got injured. Um, he got injured, and we we sort of I don't know how we did it, but we did. We sort of clawed through the spells where he was injured and managed to yeah. just kick on and tick over. And yeah. and in the end, rooms, I think. I think we uh, Brighton should have won the league, really. Mm. Um, Brighton should have won the league, and and we sort of chucked it away. Mm. And then the last, the last, uh, last week of the season, I think they got beat, and, and we uh, we won our last two games, and, and we won the league, which deservedly so, in my opinion, we were we were the best team. But um, yeah, the expectation of that season was, and the relief as well, runes, because obviously I. I, I I was in the Premier League. I worked my absolute bollocks yeah, off to get to the Premier League. It was going to be my next. It was going to be my next question. That leads me on to my next question. To be fair, mate, because I'm I'm intrigued from a selfish point of view, and I'm sure people, the fans at home, home are as well. Because for me, I say great achievement. By the way, I mean to, to have two, uh, you know, promotions and winning the title from the Championship with two different clubs, and like I say two very different scenarios as well. Um, fantastic achievement uh, for you personally. But yeah, I was going to ask on that. So we go back a little bit. You know, you get promoted with Bournemouth. You finally get back to. Know, without being cringy, the promised land. You're playing, you're playing Premier League football, you know. And to be honest, I think, you know, obviously I watched it from a biased point of view. I watched you quite closely, and to me, you took it like a duck to water. I probably, and you know, you were flying. And I remember there being links with some, you know, some big clubs. And you know, I remember maybe even the Man United was being just uh, touted about and stuff like. I'm not sure how true. <laughs> Easy rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I think my dad must have printed that paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy with that one in there, yeah? Oh, yeah. No. But listen, no, but listen, anyway, what, what my point being is, obviously, my point being is, you know, you're, you're an established, almost an established Premier League player then, you know, doing very well in the Premier League, scoring goals, plenty of assists, Bournemouth are flying as a team, and then 
yeah, like you say, then you 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 move to Newcastle. So I think you know I'm I'm keen to find out sort of how that came about and you know you're thinking behind that move. Yeah, um, again, Rune, similar to similar to Swindon in a way that I uh, left form. Uh, every club I've been at, Rune, I've been so lucky. Every club I've been at, I've had a I've had a real good relationship with all the fans, mm-hmm. um, a real good relationship with all my managers, and and my my team as well. I, I I've really enjoyed my career, and um, there's not one. One club I've been at that I thought, wow, oh, like that wasn't a good time or whatever. And Bournemouth was, as I said, probably the best best spell of my, spell of my career. Worked with the, for me, one of the best coaches in the world. Um, uh, and 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 the group of players that we had was um, so so close and 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 had such a connection and chemistry. So that was a, that was unbelievable. And, and to leave was was difficult, but to leave was. It was for a challenge rooms, if I'm honest. It's for the it's for the challenge of playing for what is Newcastle, which is a, a huge club, as you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, financially, it was one of them ones where I was actually in the go sort of negotiation with Bournemouth. Bournemouth had off, offered me something, um, and when Newcastle came in, it was like this is Newcastle. They're offering me quite a bit more money, and th- th- this Newcastle, right, they got fifty two thousand fans that are there every week roaring and pressure was always something that I felt got the best out of me yeah. um, and I wanted to put myself on I, I didn't want to I didn't want to finish my career and not experience that pressure yeah. um, and and that was that was probably the one of the biggest reasons really that I thought I, I've got to take this I've got to take this sort of I've got to take this opportunity really yeah. Um, and and my my gut feeling was don't don't miss the boat, Matty, and and I and I, I jumped and and luckily enough I, I swam because it was a I mean I think there's only really there's only I think there's only two teams rooms to get relegated and come straight back up the next season like Newcastle did. Yeah. So although yes we were expected to come back up, did some achievement to to come straight back up because not many teams can do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, it was a it was a it was a it was a tough, tough decision to leave Bournemouth, but one that has obviously has paid off now because uh, I'm at a huge, huge football club and um, one that, yes, I'm away from my family and um, and away from home and stuff like that and missing the kids, not seeing them all the time and putting them to bed all the time, but it's a sacrifice. As I said, I, I said to you, I'm willing to make sacrifices to play at the top as long as I possibly can and it's not forever. That's what I always always talk about my wife and with the kids really as well they're only young but it's not forever and 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 when i when i finish hopefully i look back proud and and, and with pride yeah of course and in terms of that with that as well Benitez was that a factor yeah for sure obviously manager of, as i said to you eddie howe for me so yeah. he's right up there of course yeah and, um, but yeah Benitez is is um he was obviously the clubs he's managed is, speaks for themselves and he's not done that. He's not been employed by them clubs for just just for the sake of it. He's 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 been picked and um I had a really, really good relationship with him, Runes. He he was he was really good for me. He tactically I learned so much. I I, I used to just play football and then working with Eddie, you start looking at it, you start looking at movements and things like that and you and you learn things and and then Benitez was different to Eddie, really, because probably tactically more defensive, and he, and his his sort of uh, principles were: if you can stay in a game, if you can keep a clean sheet, you'll get an opportunity. Obviously, yeah. that's because he's at the club. He's, he's not at Real Madrid at the minute; he's at Newcastle, so he has to look at it like that. But the, the the ability he had to adapt his tactics and and play against different teams and different players was um, was unbelievable, and and really opened my eyes to. To different ways and different, because all I knew when I went to Newcastle, all I remember doing, we used to do this at Bournemouth. We used to do this. At, you ask John, John, yeah. shut up about Bournemouth, mate. Shut <laughs> up. And I'm, but honestly, that's because I had success there, so it's like that's what I thought was the way to do it. And I have now realised. I've got to be honest. I've realised that there is more than one way to have success because yeah. um, under Manitas, like the, 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 tactically, some of the stuff we were doing, I was sitting what on doing it, and he's saying do this, do that. I'm thinking. This is never going to work ever, yeah. ever. And then we go and beat someone one 0 and you're thinking, "Whoa, unbelievable!" By the way, <laughs> and it's like, 
<laughs> like, obviously, that's, that's what you're thinking. I can't remember what. Like the home games. I remember playing against, I think, um, Arsenal. I think we beat Arsenal at home. And there's yeah. a few away games. We, a few away games have done really well in. And you're thinking, we haven't, like, we've not kicked the ball. And we're getting fat about it. Like you can imagine Neville and that going bananas on the on the concrete. <laughs> As it, boys are getting on the bus with one one nil, couldn't give a hoot, absolutely buzzing. <laughs> and it's like that, that's I don't know, it was like it was sort of a bit of genius about it, you know, like yeah. It, it, it gave it got and the way actually I don't know when I was in it, it used to batter the players in the press. It used to batter us like uh, these players are donkeys. It, to win with these players, I'm a genius and this. And all the lads used to be saying, like, how's he saying that? And we're going to go and run about for him on, on Saturday. He wants us to run about. But honestly, Runes, I, I don't know. I don't know. The, the canny I had similar thing with me, definitely. I don't know about you, but it, it made you want to, he made you want him to love you. Like, yeah. you wanted him, you wanted him to say, well done. Rafa never said well done to me, by the way. Honestly, Runes, I remember. I scored a goal against Burton. We <laughs> were pushing for the, pushing for promotion in the championship. Scored an absolute world on my right foot against Burton with one one nil. Massive game it was. Yeah. So I push it with like, under the cosh. You had the murders with a penalty. Yes, that was a penalty game. So I, I took the penalty. Penalty got disallowed. And we, honestly, we're like seventy minutes nil nil. Massive game rooms. And um, I cut inside, scored with my right, right foot. I come off the pitch. I'm thinking he must be buzzing with me. <laughs> he said. He said something like. He said something like. You need to tuck in. In, uh, closer to your midfielder when we have no ball. <laughs> Rooms, I'm thinking, is this cat all right here? Honestly, like, it, it, this, that's what he was like. But he'd never, ever, ever say, oh, "Good, like you played well today," or "Fantastic," or not, never. But we Very could beat good. anyone. Unbelievable. But again, like I say, he just had that. He had that knack of like everyone respected him. Whatever he said, everyone listened, uh, and and he was so kept things so simple for, for me I'm a visual learner but even when he spoke to you like just everything was so simple he had two or three principles that he stuck to every week however you were playing playing face um, few, no no spinning on the pass just little things but yeah. went such a long way and, and the group as I said I think we finished uh, 13th in the Premier League the, the first season we went up so um, yeah no it was brilliant for me Rooms yeah no cool and was he buzzing when Origi scored that goal then? Yeah? Well, what, sorry? I said, was he buzzing when Origi scored that goal for Liverpool last year? Ah, oh, Rooms, man. <laughs> like, see, Liverpool. <laughs> one, one, thing, one thing he did, obviously, he was like the hero at Liverpool because yeah. of what he'd done. And um, I've got to be honest, I, don't, I, I think he wanted Liverpool to win, but he didn't want Liverpool to win. Like, won <laughs> but uh, it's, it. He was honestly, we had, had a real good relationship with him, and um, for, for me, top top coach, and, and learned so much. But yeah, no, he's, uh, he's certainly a character. Uh, that's quality. I was going to ask just quickly on that on yourself there on your on a personal level. In terms of, have you found it difficult going from being like sort of like the main man, attacking player, cutting in, scoring goals, setting up goals? So, because you know, a lot, you spent a lot of time maybe at fullback, or I think you played a three-five-two, and you've been a wing back. You know, more of a team player. Listen, you was always a team player. Don't get me wrong. In terms of, you know, you put your work in and stuff. But in terms of being that attacking outlet, to now being, you know, just a more sturdy uh, midfield player, have you have you have you found that difficult that transition? Um, I can't be honest, Rooms. I've not found it difficult. I found it a real learning curve. Um, yeah, enjoyed it, thrived on it. Like. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I always fancy playing left back or left wing back. And yeah. then I remember you used to joke about it all the time in Swindon, that fullback. Yeah, like, I, I used. To, <laughs> I used to, that's, that's what I'm saying. I used to watch yeah. fullbacks and think their job's so easy. Like, it just it is so, isn't it? Like, yeah. all, right, all you really need to do is stop your winger getting a crossing. <laughs> and then once you've done that, you've had an okay game. And if you put a cross in the other end, like everyone's raving about you. So, <laughs> now, to be fair, but, as well, you never actually minded the fact you was always a good, pretty good defender, you know, in training. Yeah, so, like, yeah. so I don't know. I, I, I did. I, I um. I, I really, I really enjoyed it, and obviously, I was lucky. I had Rafa sort of teaching me how to play the position, and, yeah. and that's why that was that was his speciality, like to, to tactically show you things, and he'd show you clips of bits and pieces, and and he sort of told me how to play the position. Um, I remember my best lesson anyone's ever taught me was uh, Fabregas and Hazard played Chelsea away at Stamford Bridge. Clarkie always reminds me of the game. 
Um, he played inside me, and honestly, the, the, this this guy has just kept running. When I said the boy earlier, he's probably up there as well. Has yeah. yeah. this guy just kept running on my shoulder rooms, like, and I was thinking, I, I couldn't tuck in any more than what I'm tucking in. You know, like yeah. one of them. Yeah. And Fabregas is chipping balls over my head and stuff. <laughs> and Rune somehow, I don't know how, but with me and Clarky, Clarky dug me out of the holes about five times. I don't know how, but it was like 2 0 or something at half time. Yeah. Second half come, we get deeper and deeper and deeper. And um, I remember I'm, Hazard's wide. I've looked up wide and I swear Fabregas had the ball at his feet. Next thing I know, I've given a penalty away. I, I, he just slid it inside me. And honestly, this guy was just too good. And that was my best, that was my best lesson because um, I learned so quick, do not let anyone run inside you. Exactly. And since that day, really, um, I've always felt that's my first principle, don't get done inside. And then if you, if you get beat 1v1 against, a, a, I mean, these, these lads now in the Premier League, they're so good rooms. Yeah. You get done in a 1v1 out wide, but you, 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 you're tight and you close the angle down and... and you, you close your space and, I mean, you, you hope your centre arse put you out of the hole and, and defend the cross. But I've really enjoyed it. And obviously, playing in a five makes it easy as well because you can cheat a little bit. You can get the ball higher up the pitch. And I prefer crossing it from deep anyway. So it really did suit me and I really enjoyed it. I felt like probably I played some of my best games and most effective games for Newcastle at left wing back and, um, and really enjoyed it. And, and um, I've not really played... Since I got injured at the start of this year, obviously I played left wing back most of last season. So coming back in into the fold now, the, the manager put me right wing for a few games at the towards the end of what we just played there. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when I go back. Good no problem with that. Right, we're not going to speak about Scotland, but if you know, if when even when you are ready, then uh, I'm sure you'll be be able to give me the exclusive on that one. But right, like the, future, <laughs> <laughs> the future of Newcastle, right? Because you, for two reasons, you've just signed a new contract there, and uh, obviously there's a lot of talk in the papers and rumours about you know this big takeover happening and stuff. And you know it's great that you you know you're going to be a part of that because you just signed a new contract there. What what is your sort of personally and for the team? What's your your hopes, aims, and ambitions with, with Newcastle moving forward? I think the the, the main thing, rooms. I've got to be the, I've got to be honest. The, the main thing, certainly at the minute. Um, you probably know more than me. I'm, I'm, I've not really kept up to date with the press or yeah. read anything in the press because I think, to be honest, if it's in the press, how true is it? Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've not, I've not really looked at anything. But obviously, uh, you hear whispers of a takeover. But I don't know, Rose. I don't think in football now with the financial fair play and stuff like. That, anyways, can can things change overnight? Will I see it change? I don't know uh, if there's changes. So I'm not really too too concerned about that sort of thing. The, the, the main thing for me was that um, I've really enjoyed my time playing for Newcastle, signed a new contract. Um, and and I feel like we've got some really good young players uh, that the club have signed in, in the last window that have uh, got so much potential. And I think with with the team that we got, with the way the Premier League is now, I think that the, the top six, maybe seven or eight, are, are, too, are too far away from the rest of the league. Yeah. to really um, really compete for the for the top half of the league really but for sure I think Newcastle are a team that if we can finish in the top 10 and um, you never know you, I think Southampton have done it before and um, teams like that sneak into into the Europe or whatever yeah. then you, you never know but we have we, we, we've really got a we've got a good group at the minute we've got some real talent in the dressing room and if that can uh, fulfil their potential, then uh, it would certainly be a good team. Yeah, no, no worries with that. And uh, the new manager, Steve Bruce, how are you getting on with him? I know John Joe really, really liked what he was doing there. Yeah, he's a good guy, Bruce, mate. He's like, I don't know, he's just like one of the, just one of the boys, really. And like, yeah. you can imagine him when he was, I don't know, you can imagine him when he was 25 or 30, being the same as what we are now. You know, like, just, yeah. just a genuine fella, like, lovely guy, his staff is, Top top men. Um, we've got Aggers and Clem, and uh, again, just really nice chaps and um, enjoyable sessions, enjoyable, uh, enjoyable training days and things like that. So, just yeah, the managers. I mean, I, mean, I was injured as a Sabres when he came in. I started a few, got injured in the cup, and and I've not really been involved until the last 
month or so of, of, of what we've just played, as I said, but he was spot on with me. He, he, he took the doctor's advice that I'd look after myself and be professional. And he was brilliant with me throughout my injury and, and really helped me through it. And um, yeah, no, he's, I've not got a bad word to say about him. He's really good. Well, that's good. And like I said, I think the same thing, though. Um... And get it right there at Newcastle, maybe with a trophy. I mean, that would be amazing, wouldn't it, with them fans and the support they get there. So again, who's that trophy? I was saying, yeah, like, you know, if you can be a Newcastle when they do get it right, I mean, how, how good would that be to win a trophy or, you know, get into Europe up there with a the, with the fan base that they've got? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the fans expected that from when we was in the Championship. Yeah, they want in Europe. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we need to be in the Premier League first. Yeah, yeah but now the, the fans said, that everyone knows them. They're lunatics, man. And they, they just live, eat, sleep, football. It's like, yeah. it's just mad. I've never seen anything like it. And I'm from Portsmouth, which I'd say is a, is a football, football city, really. But um, this place is just unbelievable. Everyone loves football, yeah. and um, it's it's uh, it's unique. But it's um, yeah, no, it'd be great for the fans. I think they're, they're they they've been they've been crying out for some real success and. Obviously, we had, a, we had a great year in the championship that we had full house every week, and yeah. there's um, there, there's hopefully a, a bright future ahead for the club. Yeah, no, sure. And you mentioned Portsmouth there. When I was doing my homework earlier, it's no secret. I know you've uh, there's a little article come out recently that um, you, you you think you might fancy going full circle and ending up back at Portsmouth one day, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be honest, he's just me. Uh, Jordan's uh, sort of. He's a reporter at the, at the news there, and he asked me to do a bit of my. It was ten years, a couple of weeks ago, that I made my Premier League debut, and yeah, uh, he asked me to do a bit, and we were just having a chat, and, and it, it's out. I don't know if I probably mentioned it to you when we was at Swindon or whatever, but it's always been in my head. I felt like I left Portsmouth um, with unfinished business, and I'm a Portsmouth fan. It was like my dream was always to play for Pompey, and 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 I've not fulfilled that really because. I remember playing, I made probably 10, 12 appearances and I remember playing and I, I was playing, I said in the interview, I was playing on borrowed time and it's mm. one of those things that have always stuck with me that one day definitely I'd like to, I'd like to return to Pompey and, and have an impact of some sort um, and hopefully some success there because yeah, that's one thing that in my career that I wanted to fulfil, I've, yeah. really, um, I've not really fulfilled that dream. Yeah, of course. Like, don't feel like you're sat satisfied with your, with your time there. That's all right. You need to, you need to learn to struggle then in League One for a couple of years till you're about 37, 38, and then go down there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about 37. I got three. I got three. Right. Last got couple more years. Ago, so I've kept you for uh, too long anyway, as it is already. Um, right. We had your like we said. You, you mentioned it. We had Simon Ferry on, and uh, you know, I, like I said, I've never met many. I haven't met many people like him. He's a bit of a one-off. But I was just wondering, since you left Swindon. Uh, who, who's been sort of the main jokers, whether it be at Bournemouth or Newcastle? Any any other any other funny characters around? Um, yeah, I mean uh, Harry Arter was uh, at Bournemouth. He was the one. He was like, <laughs> I don't know. He just he's like bipolar though. One one day he's like on top of the world, and he just be. <laughs> I don't know. He just he's a, you know what he's like, Rooms. He's a madman. Yeah, but um, he was the life and soul for. For four years, rooms like this guy was in the dressing room every day, winding yeah. someone up, battering someone, battering someone. Whether it, whatever it was, he was at the heart of it, and uh, he was, as I said, he was so important the, the year in the, in the championship and uh, in the Premier League as well. And um, Newcastle probably Dwighty. Dwighty's the Dwighty's the one that um, I mean, me and Dwighty, we've had probably four or five good rows, like, <laughs> but. Because we're both very similar, we're both fiery, we're both off the cuff and, and loud and, and annoying. And um, yeah, Dwight is the one. Dwight is the one. I, I, I love him, but we argue. We argue, and sometimes he loves arguing. This guy, like I've never, like he'll, he'll start a conversation and he'll agree with you, but somehow he disagree. He ends up disagreeing with you in the conversation. But Dwight, we're saying the same thing here. And he's arguing with you. Oh, he's mad, obviously. He's mental, but he's a great guy, funny guy. Okay, right, great guy on Harry Hartland, little mention there. Right, last one, really, Matty. You've, you've given us loads of uh, information there about your career and, and your moves and stuff like that. And, you know, lots of, um, lots of advice for the youngsters to take out of that as well. And, you know, I've already spoke about it, and I've, I've actually a report about yourself there in terms of, you know, 
you, you're probably one of the most professional players I ever played with, and you know it's no secret that's why you've gone on to the top and do so as well as you have done. But if you could just sort of for the young players that uh, uh, maybe watching who you know like yourself who maybe not at the level that they wanted to be at um, right now, what would be the one piece of advice for, for the youngsters at home? Um, keep going, rooms. For for me in my career, definitely for me. Perseverance, yeah. Yeah, it's about desire and, and mentality, really, because I've played with, I, I say it to everyone that asked me this question, really. I've played with so many players from 15 rooms. I remember playing with players that were miles better than me, miles better than me. Yeah. Uh, and they, 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 never, they never got in the youth team or the youth team ones that I've played with never got in the, never got a pro or whatever. But I've played with so many players better than me that never had the mentality, the desire to get to the top or to, to, to make it as a professional and then when you do get there, you, you can never take your foot off the gas because it's so, um, as you know, in the, in the leagues and then the higher you go, it's even more so. It's yeah. so relentless. You have, to be, you have to be on it everywhere. You're a, you, it's, it's, a, it's a 24-7 job because yeah. it's not, it's, you, you don't just turn up to training and go home and then turn up on a Saturday. You've got to be so dedicated to everything. Your whole life is dedicated to football. And then you get the rewards, and when that's over, you can enjoy the rewards. That's how I look at it. But for me, the the, the main thing, advice, just never give up. You'll get setbacks, you'll get um, you'll get kicks, you get knocked back, but keep going. If you if you believe in your ability, you just got to keep going. And, and in the end, if if you persevere and you've got enough ability, you can you can certainly make a career for yourself. Yeah, no problems with that, and I, I could not agree more. And like I said. Even myself, really, probably falling in the wrong generation. Do you know what I mean? I just needed to turn up for training and turn up. <laughs> yeah, you, you was you was always late and worried about what you're doing for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, no. good days, though, mate. Good days. Last one. How's the golf, mate? Have you been playing any? Well, before all this, was you playing much golf, Phil? Ruins, ruins. Honestly, mate, I played. Um, I've not played. I've got two little ones now. I've got a little boy. Yeah. He's four and a little girl who's about 18 months and just don't get a chance. Really, yeah. Yeah, little, yeah, little man's four, yeah. Yeah, little man's four, yeah. I mean, when I'm up in Newcastle, I just forget a day off and normally shoot back. Yeah. And uh, and then, obviously, in the season, I, I don't really like playing in the season because no. I feel like it takes out your legs. So it's a summer thing. And obviously, with the little ones at home and you're only here for six weeks in the summer, it's a tough one to say, you know, this is I've got to go for three days a week and that. So it's... Um, yeah. It's a tricky one, but yeah, no, it's, uh, I've, I've not played. I played once every week against the two brothers and my dad, and I did win that. So I've got the bragging rights in the family at the minute. So I, I won't play with them again for probably a few more years. <laughs> try and drag that win out, yeah. So John, Joe, don't try and uh, try and um, in, interrupt with your uh, getting back down south, south in now. <laughs> <laughs> Say again. I said, John, Joe, don't try and interrupt with you getting down south. I thought we might try and get no. you on the golf course. Ruins. He's double busy, mate. He's playing for. He's playing for. Uh, Place for Northumberland golf, golf team, <laughs> honestly, mate. You don't want to play with me, he's playing with like professionals in, in Scotland and that. He's a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly. mate, right. Well, once all this is done, we'll have to uh try and have a catch up and get out. And of course, I know I owe him, I owe him a game anyway, so um, yeah, we'll see yeah, how it's sorted, mate. But no, listen, Matthew, thank you, Matt, mate, thanks for coming on, mate. And uh, to be fair, mate, it's the best I've seen a barnet as well. It's the most sensible I've ever seen it. No short round the sides, isn't it? It's barnet, no, I normally have skin bug on the socks. Everyone keeps saying, look, look. Yours is, I remember the haircut you had when we went for a tellies that time. Do you remember? <laughs> Do you remember that, Rooms? Yeah, you I know. Like, <laughs> you, you had a green, did you have a green feeler top on or something? Nah, no, I, I think, it, no, where was it? We, we, it was like we had to have a meal before we all went on, off on some holidays, wasn't it? Yeah, you'd had long hair. You'd had long hair and then you got it all cut off and you looked like Susan Boyle off of uh, the telly <laughs> feeler. What's her name? Is it Susan Boyle? Susan Boyle. No. Claire, Claire, what's her name? Claire, um... Ah... Oh, Who? Claire, Claire Baldin. Claire Baldin, you're yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so when, 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 when I get my man to edit... When I get my man to edit this, then I'll do Claire Baldin and uh, Gordon Ramsay, yeah? Yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, to, be, to be fair, mate, you already. Uh, I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna edit it anyway. You already grasped yourself up at the start. You left it. Left your team on your phone. But I was, <laughs> I was, I was, scrambling, I was scrambling. I was thinking. He's asked me my team here. I can't remember all my team, and it's on my phone that I'm on. 
it's more natural anyway uh, in this time of um, obviously lockdown. And mate, honestly, mate, I really, really appreciate you coming on the show. From a selfish point of view, I enjoyed it um, going into obviously bits of your career. I haven't caught up for a while, and I'm sure the fans at home and, uh, would have enjoyed it. And like I say, the more people like you that I get on of, of, of playing at the top level, the better it'll be for the podcast. And like I say, to all the people who are watching, actually, can, can you uh, subscribe to the channel? It's been going well so far, and uh, hopefully it can kick off. Good, man, Bruce. Mate, Take it easy, mate. Speak soon. Thanks, Thanks you later, mate. mate.